Hi, I'm Luke Coley, and this is my What's in My Bag video. I really enjoy watching these, so I figured I'd make one as well. Uh, I travel with a Pelican 1510 and a cheap black backpack that I got, uh, who knows where, I don't remember. Um, not much audio related type things in here. Uh, the only thing I'm really concerned about is my laptop and my headphones. I have the and I guess I'll show everything here. I have the Audio Technica ATH M50X. These are great sounding headphones. Uh, I put the softies on them. Uh, that was recommended by DC Sound Op, and I love them. Um, just great sounding headphones all together. Uh, very comfortable to wear. Uh, and this, this is some headphone case I got off of Amazon. It's made by HyperX. I don't really remember. Just grabbed it when I saw it. Uh, there's a the laptop. I have a set of Ultimate Ears, should I need that. Uh, and then I have a Bluetooth receiver, which I'll show you more about that uh, shortly. But this is the receiver part. And the rest is just uh, cables and things for just daily to do. Oh, and I always keep a little uh, pink noise generator on my bag just for whatever reason. I don't think I've ever really used that much. I just like having it there. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. Still recording, so set my laptop aside. Let's get into the Pelican. Inside I have my smart rig that is wired to a pedal board. I'll show you that. Uh, I have a PowerCon cable for getting power to it. And then this whole thing lifts out as one piece. Uh, I'm gonna set aside the rest of the Pelican so you can see this. Here we are. Okay, this is the uh, pedal board that I put everything that I use for my smart rig on it. So I have PowerCon comes in, hits the quad box. Uh, this is just a uh, power adapter to get these bulky power, bulky um, converter AC to DC for the, uh, you know, the adapter for the. Um, wireless mic receiver and the switch. You can see the wireless mic receiver is here. And then I have the Behringer UMC 204HD, two in, four out. Um, it's a nice little interface, very cheap, works great. Um, there's the antennas for the receiver and then everything's wired in on this tail. Uh, so this is a platform for my laptop to land. So I can put my laptop here uh, that has power for my laptop should I need it. And then I hook this up, I plug in the Thunderbolt and USB, and everything's connected. Uh, as soon as I turn on smart, everything should be where it needs to be, and then I can start measuring. Uh, let's set that aside for now. And then, uh, on the this is hardwired in, which is nice, and then I can uh, wire other devices to it, like wireless receivers, anything else like that. Um, this is the tail that comes off. It's a four-channel XLR that I've kind of modified a little bit here. Uh, this is, uh, there's several outputs on the Behringer uh, sound cards. This is output one and two. I labeled it tone. I use it for a couple different things, but this is the, um, the, the output of Smart and then any other uh, app that I want to play music from. Um, I have all the adapters, so if I want to listen to listen to it on a home stereo, if I want to listen to it on something that has quarter inch, and then I have adapters in the bottom of my Pelican case. These are the EWI impedance matching transformer. Um, it's just an easy quarter inch to XLR, and that's when I need to connect to um, a mixer that has XLR only. Let's set that aside. Um, so there's output one, and you can see here I have an extra little XLR wire to that. That's actually a Y off of the pin two, so that I can then send my reference signal back to the um, a, the interface, um, and I don't need to pull another pick point off of the mixer or anything. I can just go straight um, Y off of the output and then run this output into the mixer, and I'll be able to measure it. This is before everything. So the device under test becomes the entire sound system. Uh, that's handy for quick uh, alignment or any kind of re um, quick measurements. That's a handy thing to have. 
So that's that connector here. That's the red one. So since I have the yellow one, uh, that's labeled Q reference. It has a blue, and there's another one here. That tops down the other pin. So these are actually unbalanced. Um, so I'm using pin 2 on the Q reference and pin 3 for red. And I have those here. Here's the red one. Here's the blue one. Should I want to run um, other things back into the interface, sometimes I use this as a headphone amp to listen to two channels of things. Um, I'll show you that a little later. So that has two channels here on one connector. Both unbalanced, but using balanced connectors because it's what I had and it's uh, also you know the most common thing I hook up to. Uh, then there is the white one. That is output three and four on the sound card, which is uh, again, unbalanced uh, stereo, it's wired. Left is pin two, right is pin three. And then that breaks out to RCA or quarter inch or XLR with those uh, transformers. And then this is the XLR output of the wireless receiver. Um, that also has a quarter inch output that goes directly into the channel one of the sound card. But this is the mic out portion. And then I built this uh, goofy adapter to make a two-way talkback. So what it does is uh, this is currently just a regular output. A straight, it's straight cable from here to here. Uh, then this splits out pin two and three. I believe the blue is pin two, uh, red is pin three. That would make sense, left and right. Uh, and then this is the uh, control connection. And I will, uh, let's pull that out of the bag and then I'll show you the rest of the Pelican. So then I have this little box that uh, it's homemade, something or other. Um, it's cheesy, but it works. Uh, I hook up just a regular old eighth inch aux cord and then that plugs in here so I can leave this back in the dog house and this length can come to me so I have a control button when that's hooked up to the eighth connector that will short the pins down to ground so that when I press the button it opens the microphone um, it's quiet it doesn't pop or anything like that and so I have a two-way talk so I can set this for um, front of house and monitors or you know the conductor and the musicians or calm and um, monitors or two stage or something like that now to do calm I have another adapter excuse me I have another adapter and that goes from 4 pin XLR to regular XLR connectors so I can take a mic in so if I hook that up to let's say the red one for calm, I can leave the belt pack on all day, and I'll actually use this on the red to return it. I can hook up my calm belt pack, and I can listen to it from the Behringer. I can put a program feed or the cue from my console, which it currently is here, cue, and then this would be the calm return. If I switch out channel one to be the red connector, now I can listen to calm and the cue output of the headphone. Uh, of the output of the console uh, and wear my comfortable headphones rather than the um, single muff comm headset or something like that. Uh, handy for corporate shows. I wouldn't really use it for mixing music just because I want to listen. But uh, a nice thing to have nonetheless because headphones are a lot more comfortable than a lot of those clear comm headsets that are out there. So there's that. Um, let me move this out of the way and I'll show you the rest of the Pelican. Probably a good edit point. Okay, here's the rest of the Pelican. I've got a switched talkback mic just for uh, voice of God, any old thing like that, just for um, making announcements. It's a Samson M10, it is cheap. Uh, I picked it up at either a Walmart or something like that for 10 bucks, and it's been fine, holds up nice. It's a Great fake SM58. Um, I've got some Y cables. Always good to have some extra Y cables for outputs. Um, handy thing to have, there's three there. Uh, I have a Q box uh, that is just, you know, the good old Q box. I put a belt clip on it for um, just being able to carry it around. And then, uh, yeah, so there it is. And I have a Behringer CT200 cable tester. This is um, a handy little cable tester because um, it does Cat5, which is nice, and it also does USB. 
Um, so if I'm hooking up to a DSP processor or something like that and I can't get connection, um, I test it sometimes. And I've never had a bad one, but it's just nice to know that it's working. Uh, the, I like this one a lot. It's metal. Uh, the only thing I don't like is these uh, switches are kind of high, so it can get bumped and turned on. Um, that's why I leave it on the bottom with the pedal board resting on it so it can't really shift that much. Um, but I also keep rechargeable batteries, which I'll show you in a minute. All right, there's that. Uh, let's get to the measurement. So I have a FugTech um, cheesy thing I bought on Amazon. It's actually meant to be a selfie stick that has a tripod. Uh, but this has been great. It goes four feet high or so. It folds up real small. And then here's my measurement mic. I used that Line 6, oh, what a mess, uh, the Line 6 belt pack receiver, and this this is the phone holder that came with the Fugue Tech, excuse me, and then I tighten that down, tighten that to the selfie stick thing, and then I have the Mel Labs TX3 microphone that plugs directly into the belt pack no phantom no nothing uh, works great so in the time it takes me to set this piece up um, and then hook up the pedal board I can be up and measuring within less than five minutes most of the time uh, and I like that because it eliminates variables and just gets me to the good stuff quickly and I'm not having to you know uh, fight my gear okay let's put that aside um, I have uh, this is an additional antenna uh, this is sold on WA5VJB, uh, his website, that's his call, he's a ham radio guy. Um, this is the 2 to 11 gigahertz antenna, uh, which I wire to a BNC to get onto the uh, line 6 receiver. But that is a, um, and then I got put a blob of Sugru on there to hold it in place, and that seems to work okay. Should I need to get more distance? Rarely use it. Um, rarely have issues with the line 6, especially during... Uh, setup time um, because there's just not as many 2.4 giga, gigahertz devices in the area. Uh, I have a XLR to T4A connector. Uh, T4, that, that's the female version. So that goes directly to the belt pack and then I can plug a mic directly into that. So, um, you know, should I need to send wireless audio to back to me from somewhere that's non-mission critical, then I'll use that. And I also have the lob that came with the Line 6 because, hey, it's nice to have a lob should you need it. If you're on a gig and they just don't have anything and you want to throw one up somewhere, it's, it's a nice thing to have. All right, let's put that aside. The RF Explorer. I have the 6G combo. There's a USB cable to hook it up to the laptop. I run Vantage, which is RF Venue software. Uh, this is a BNC to SMA connector. <coughs> excuse me, um, that I can hook up to the wireless receiver output to see exactly what the receiver is seeing. Um, I need an attenuator on there. I have yet to put one on um, for shame on me. Anyway, uh, there's more antennas in here, the UHF band, the 2.4, and the 5 gigahertz antenna. Okay, let's put those out of the way. Uh, this is a clamp for my um, Ubiquiti Bullet. This is to get the network control um, for all the devices that I'm using. So wireless mic receivers, the console that has remote control, um, anything else that I just need. Maybe a, a comm device or something like that. Uh, that's also nice to have. Um, so then this, I taped the power supply to it and tape these cables in there so that, again, eliminate variables. Just one, one plug to plug in, put in the antenna, hook the thing up. Uh, excuse me, I did that backwards. That goes here. Either way, this is really meant to sit on a, on a desk or a flat table surface, but this will work. I can put it right there. It's an omnidirectional antenna. Obviously, it probably would work better if I had it straight up and down, but I'm just showing you this now. That will plug into the quad box on my pedal board and then also wire cat 5 to that which I have in here getting a little top heavy uh, but I have cat 5s in this little pocket here 
I'll show you the rest of the pockets in a minute and then an adapter should I need to get a little more length. Um, and that way I can just get reliable, pre-programmed show control that is uh, unique to me and all my devices so that um, I'm not fighting a network when I plug everything in. It just, it just kicks on and works. Uh, last thing in the bottom is a Greeley, a Greenly uh, multimeter. This is I use this for checking voltage and continuity. That's pretty much it. Um, it will do current. Uh, I have never done current with it. Really not not important. Uh, mostly just for testing voltage in the wall before I plug uh, device in, especially if it seems a bit sketchy. So that's that. Let me put that out of the way. And let's lean this back so you can see everything at the top. Uh, first thing I have is a motion sensing light. This is just an under cabinet light. Um, great for when you just reach in and the whole thing lights up. Handy thing to have. Let's get that out of there. Okay, uh, this is the tool pouch. I have a piece of tape to keep the rips from stop spreading any further. Um, I have a quick screwdriver. It has six bits in it. Uh, three flat, three Phillips. Um, just nice to have. One screwdriver has everything I need. Uh, Cheap C wrench, just gotta have it. Uh, laser distance measure, handy thing to have for that, but I also use it with for distance, obviously. But I use it for angles as well because I have uh, Nathan Lively's uh, Sound Design Live angle chart, and this also has the uh, calculations for forward aspect ratio and um, other things on the back. Uh, Nathan has plenty of videos on that. Anyway, I use this for. Um, Finding the angle, I can put this on top of the speaker, get this uh, laser measure lined up to the angle, and then see exactly where the end of uh, coverage is. So that's just a um, you know, handy thing to have, fits right there, good to go. Um, a mini screwdriver, this has some small bits in the end of it, and I can't seem to get it undone, but uh, this has a small Phillips and a small flat. I'm not gonna fight it right now, it's just biting me anyway. Um, actually, I'll show you the other things too. Um, I have a Leatherman I carry on me. Let's go ahead and see if I can get that uh, open. Oh, there it is. Uh, I must have shoved that in bad or cross-threaded it or something. Anyway, uh, let's see. I've got some... That's probably what was causing the issue. Something's jammed in there. Ah, oh, there it is. So a small flat, small Phillips, and a larger Phillips. That's, um... Just useful to have, you know, should I need it. Uh, you know, it's rare it comes out, but when it does, it's it's um, it's definitely needed. So we'll worry about that. That's probably how it got messed up last time. Okay, uh, come back to that. And then I have a small bubble level for when the one in your Genie Tower is broken and you just need to level, make sure something's leveled off. Um, just a handy thing to have. Uh, rarely use it, but it's there if I need it. Okay, uh, the adapter pocket. This is, let's get this thing out of here. The adapter pocket. Uh, I have another inline transformer, uh, quarter inch XLR, uh, quarter inch unbalanced, the handy thing to have to get from the base DI to the base amp without having to find another quarter inch cable because um, musicians never have more than the one cable they need. Um, they will not have extra and it's good if you do. Uh, let's see, we have some little adapters in here. I've got a uh, lightning to eighth because you know I wanna play music off my phone but no one brings the adapter. Uh, my phone still has the headphone jack for how long I do not know. Uh, here we go, we got the quarter inch to RCA. Uh, that's um, Unbalanced TS, there's a quarter inch TRS to eighth. These are great for headphone adapters. Um, you can get those in bulk because they never come back when you loan one out. Uh, let's see, and then I also have, let's put that back in the pocket. And then I also have a summing cable. So this will go um, balanced XLR to unbalanced quarter inch. And that's based on the Rain Why Not Why paper. Um, the white paper they have, uh, you can Google it, but, um, basically there's a resistor network in here of, um, I think it's 470 ohm resistors between 
pin two and three before they meet, and then a pin a 20k resistor between ground and signal, um, and that's the you know based on their their white paper, uh, and it works great, uh, no noise, and I can um, convert balanced to unbalanced without a direct box, should I need it. Uh, XLR barrel connectors, can never have too many of those. Uh, make sure you put your name on them or put your sticker, your company logo, whatever. They will walk very easily. That's a Velcro tab. I don't really need that. Get out of here. Uh, let's see. In this pocket I have the Avantri. This is a Bluetooth transmitter. This is the one that uh, was with my inner monitors earlier. So this connects to it. And uh, that's just the straight headphone out. It's got a volume control. Um, gets pretty loud with the UE7s hooked up to it because um, they're just, they have a, um, a little high sensitivity, low sensitivity. I don't know. They get loud whenever I plug them in. Um, I can't remember which they have. Anyway, this has, uh, this will transmit or receive. So if someone has Bluetooth something that they need to transmit, I can receive it to here and it'll have optical and eighth inch out. Runs on USB power. I uh, have a little eighth inch cable. Uh, I used to use this for headphone cue or just monitoring things. Uh, the latency is pretty good. It's about 30 milliseconds. And uh, I've since been playing around with Soundcaster, which is a new thing uh, that uses your computer and transmits to your phone. And latency on that's a lot better. So uh, I may end up purchasing that. Uh, this is a magic trackpad. I've got some Velcro on it. I think it was mounted to something at some point. But it gives it a good grip on a desk, and then if my laptop's up behind somewhere, it's just not easily accessible, I can connect to it with this and still control everything. And the final pocket. Uh, this is where I keep the um, wireless mic. Uh, this also connects. This is my beat-up one, so I use it for talkback. Um, this one I'll use with that talkback switch. Uh, earlier so that I can talk back to two places and have a wireless mic there to not clutter my work area. So if I just have a small mixer and you know headphones and things like that, I don't want much on a cable that's going to get in my way unless it's super important. Um, so if this is just me talking back, it's really not that important. Although the 2.4 on the Line 6 has been solid, but it is what it is. Uh, so I have a little anti, sure anti-roll device, so I can just drop it and it'll stay on a table. Works great, good to go. Um, rechargeable batteries. I always need batteries for these wireless mics and things, and I hate to be wasteful. So I've got a couple of those here. I'll take those out so you can see a full empty case here. Got double A's and triple A's. Uh, the double A's for the microphones and whatever else, and triple A's are usually for the light that's in here, or maybe a flashlight, whatever else runs off. Uh, I have a roll of pocket gaff. Uh, that's four inch gaff uh, around a uh, e-cigarette battery that is very old, but um, I don't use anymore. And so I've turned it into a little roll of pocket gaff. And finally, the nine volt batteries. Uh, you can always need a nine volt battery because someone's acoustic guitar is dead. Uh, this one has the, I have an alkaline and then a rechargeable uh, 9 volt battery that has a little USB recharger in it. Uh, I have another one of these in the queue box so I usually use that to switch in between and then I keep one alkaline ready to go for uh, whenever I need to loan it to a musician or something like that. Loan it. Uh, Alright, there's my box. That's everything I travel with. Uh, I think it's a very compact uh, but has everything you need. It's great for um, It'll go on the airline, you get your personal bag and one carry-on, that's this. Uh, and it's about 40 pounds. And it's a little heavy a lot of time, but fortunately this has wheels. Um, I also did the modification to put luggage wheels on this thing, rather than the little flat bogey wheels that are on it, that come with it. Um, mostly because they were just loud. These are a lot quieter, especially rolling on flat surfaces in an airport or something like that. But... Um, these are also a lot cheaper to get and easy to get. Uh, I imagine Pelican would give me those, but those are there. I like them. They're a lot more quiet. So that's what's in my bag. Thanks for watching.